Hi everyone, Monica here and for today's video, I will be sharing what I think is a valuable conversation with you. So this is about that time that I actually got interviewed by a third year EC student from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Her name is Angeline. So long story short, one day she reached out to me on Instagram and told me about how she was able to view some of my YouTube videos talking about electronics engineering and they had a course requirement in one of their subjects and it was to interview someone who is already on the industry, gain some insights about the engineering career when you are an ECE graduate. That interview happened last February 25. I did get her consent in making the interview into a YouTube content. However, she didn't want her face or her identity revealed on the video. And of course, I'm going to honor it. I really wanted to share this conversation with you because she did ask really good questions and I wanted to share my thoughts, not just to her, but to you who is watching this video. And so, without further ado, let's get started. Angeline from Polytechnic University of the Philippines, a third year ECE student. Po. Um, so, can you introduce yourself? Hi, so I am Harmonica Galerdo Mamitag. I am an ECA graduate of St. Louis University. So I'm three years into my engineering career now. So first question na po agad. Ano po yung trabaho ninyo or position ninyo ngayon sa company po? Right now, I am working as a DevOps engineer. Ano po yung mga ibang naging trabaho niyo po pago yung work niyo ngayon po? Meron akong dalawang naging trabaho bago ako maharating sa DevOps engineer na position. So, I started out sa very different industry. So, semiconductor industry muna, which I was a product engineer. Tapos, next nag-venture na ako sa IT engineering world. Ayan. So, I worked for fintech company so it's either my or Gcash. and i was a tech ops engineer there nakatulong po ba yung pagiging license engineer niyo po para makapasok po sa trabaho real talk to ah meron pa ring mga mga company na talagang ni-recognize yung pagiging license electronics engineer mo especially if talagang ECE lang yung hinahanap nila for that position. So, more on sa semicon doctor companies, ganon. Pero it's not everything. If they're going to hire you, it's not because dahil lang license engineer ka. Yeah. So, you still have to invest in your skills. Hindi siguro na parang na-emphasize sa college, but you really have to present yourself in a way na magaling ka makitungo sa tao. I think attitude and yung skills mo more than anything, any title sa world natin. Yung maglaland ng job for you. And next po, uh, saan po kayo nag-OJT noong college po? At saka nakatulong po ba yung OJT para piliin nyo po yung work nyo ngayon po? Actually, that's a very, very good question, Angeline. Super nakatulong yung OJT. So, yung kwento nito is nag-OJT ako sa first company, which is Texas Instrument, when I was in fourth year. And fortunately, I was offered the position. Pinalag tayo na bago pa ako graduate, uh, there was a job waiting for me. So, Definitely nakatulong kasi preferred din ng mga company yung ganong programs kasi doon nila nag-gauge if you are culturally fit in their company and yung small na experience mo from them really helps a lot. 
for you as well na mag-adjust sa work mo. Especially first job yun. So, definitely 100% nakatulong yun. And I would recommend to really consider, really think about it, kung ano talagang company yung papasukan mo for OJT. Most students right now, kung ano lang yung pwedeng uh, pag-OJT-han. But you know, you have to know your worth, your value. You really have to think about it. So, my advice is, may tatlong career paths ang mga ECE. Ayan. I also made a video about that. I think you mentioned it in your letter or invitation to me. So, really think about it. If it's semicon, if it's telecommunication, if it's IT. And then from that, doon ka humanap ng company na papasukan mo for OJT. So, in that way, makakatulong talaga yung OJT mo sa paglan ng first job mo. So, kung tatahakin ko po yung line of work na since uh, medyo interested po kasi ako sa pagiging software engineer, ano po yung ma-advise nyo sa akin? Meron po ba kayong mare-recommend na training or certification po? For me, I think you need to invest sa mga trending ngayon. So, what I mean by trending skills are, ayan, Python. There are free courses that you can take. And okay na yun, actually. Pero if certification, pwede ka, pwede mong tahakin yung uh, PCEP or PICA. Right now, I am AWS certified, so Amazon Web Services. So, I just recently took yung cloud practitioner. So, any cloud na cloud uh, infrastructure, so Microsoft Azure, yun yung mga trending ngayon kasi um, IT industry, gone are the days na parang nagre-rely kami sa data centers. Ngayon, you can you can just rent data centers. So, popular platforms like Netflix, they are using AWS services to distribute their platform or their movies, di ba, yung mga yun. Advice ko din, build your resume while you're still in college. So, what I mean by that is, di ba, meron kayo sa college ng mga competitions, yung mga parang electronics week, kanyan. So, dun ka magpabida. <laughs> or hindi na magpabida, but you, you can join those stuff. Also, hindi lang sa technical skills, but also leadership skills. So, magaganda yung mga webinars or seminar. Webinars na kasi yung trend ngayon, di ba? Kasi online na tayo. Pero, Definitely, leadership skills will also come. So, that will be an edge to you if meron ka nung mga ganun. So, for example, mga student council. I I didn't uh, join them, but I saw sa batch namin that may advantage pala yun sa other candidates. So, yun yung mga recommend. Last question po. Um, probably uh, most important <laughs> Totoo okay. po ba na mataas yun sa na engineer po? Ah, okay. Ah, <laughs> oh my gosh, hindi ako handa. Well, I think you will really start in a... Hindi naman masyadong mababa, pero okay na sahod. If you don't uh, let yourself be lowballed by a company. So what I mean by that is, Actually, it's really up to you kung paano mo i-market yung self mo and kung magsisettle ka sa mababang offer. Ayan. Pero, para sa akin ha, right now, <laughs> I can say na mataas, pero <laughs> hindi ko din natikman yung mataas na sweldo right after college. So, I had to work my way here by investing on my skills and getting a good resume, di ba? Oo, totoo siya. You can earn parang more than 50K or even six digits in your career. Pero what I would 
advise the younger generations right now is huwag kayo mag-engineering dahil sa pera. <laughs> kasi yung notion na mag-engineering ako kasi maraming pera dito is stereotyping kayo, di ba? But people really work hard in order to be able to deserve their salaries. Also, yun nga, there are companies that are willing to give you much higher than you expected. So, to be honest ako, ganun yung nangyari sa company ko. Ako pa nga yung maarte eh. Pero, pasok ba yung salary na gusto ko? Kasi, for me, bago ako mag-gauge sa isang interview sa isang company, I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste their time. So, kung hindi pasok yung salary, which is, syempre, nag-work tayo, and sa akin right now, yun yung isa sa major factors kung bakit ko i-accept yung company. And pasok siya. After ako in-interview, nung in ako, mas mataas yung ibinigay. So, my advice, huwag kayong magsettle sa mga kompanya na nilulubol kayo. Kasi as long as may nagsasettle sa mga maliliit na sweldo, syempre yung offer nila yan. Diba? Pero kung wala talagang nag accept wala. Wala talagang masusweldohan ng maliit. Ayan. So, ayan, yun lang. Uh, know your value, but uh, don't do engineering for money. I think that if it's your passion to be an engineer, and if you're good at it, then money will come later. Thank you very much, Ma. Okay. Thank you, Anjali. Bye-bye. Have a good night. And so that's what happened in the interview. I just wanted to clarify on how I answered the last question. I answered it in a way to address the opposite, actually. Because I live in the Philippines, I am an engineer here, and I live the situation. And there has been an ongoing meme on how we are so low bold as engineers here in the Philippines. And I don't want to demotivate anyone who is interested in pursuing an engineering career. But at the same time, I don't want to put false information out there. So that's how I answered the last question. And if you have any type of comment on that, your insights, then you should share it definitely on the comment section below. You are free to say whatever you want as long as it is relevant to the topic. And yeah, anything that you want to comment on other parts of the video, please feel free to put it down there. And yeah, that's it for my video today. I hope that you can subscribe to my channel, click on the notification bell button, and I'll see you on my next videos. Bye!